G'day. Welcome back to the Action Shed. Today, we're gonna to start on some of the rush repairs on this. So I'll catch you after the intro. Uh, we're gonna put some Daihatsu back in the Daihatsu. Alright, bet you're glad to see me again. It's been a minute. I tell you what, I've just been busier than a twink at a 10 man lemon party. And if you don't want to know what that is, look it up or ask your mum. She's been to one. Um, so we're playing with the diet too again. Uh, I meant to order some sheet for the floor. I haven't been able to, it's just been flat out. So, off to the left of the camera, I have a bit of donor cab out of my rock crawler leftovers. And, uh, We'll use a bit of that for now. Fold it up in the bench vise for a little odd inside. So I'm gonna start with the back of the floor. Um, there's like a step down from the seat base to the flat part. It's rusted along that, you might have seen in the previous couple of videos. Um, so it's a, it's a double radius to a flat that the floor spot welds to. Um, the top rad's good, bottom rad's rooted. So the back of this cab wall I have, I'll show you in a second, has that radius in it. We'll section it along that. I've got just the right width. I've already cut pieces out of it to put into Sarge. Um, so, good thing I cut it where I did because I would have been rooted otherwise. I was thinking if I couldn't do it out of this, I was just gonna like radius it and then just go straight down to like a, what's that? 180 minus 45 um, degree angle. And it'd probably look alright, but it's like I was looking out the back of the shed, this is always there. I'm like, oh, it's probably got the right rat on it. It's got a little pressed seam in it as well where the floor's gonna go. It should look alright. And it's diet two parts, back into diet twos. Um, we'll start with that. Haven't touched any of the floor bracings. I have coated it with a rust converter. That's about it. I've partially pulled the driver side floor pan out off camera. It's proven to be a real pain in the ass. No, I didn't pull the pedal box out. Yes, I should, but I don't want it. Um, so we'll do a bit of measure and I'll slip into something that won't get destroyed by fire. Uh, I'll pop you off the tripod and we'll have a look at this cab and what I'm going to do in the back here. Alrighty, a bit of freehand camera work, why not? So as you can see, or maybe not see, that black is a bit of rust converter. I've also done the bracing on the passenger side floor pan when it focuses, which it probably won't. Um, so this is what I've got to deal with here, a step down here, so rad from the floor comes to another rad to flat to meet with the floor sheet that goes on top of this bracing here. As you can see, it is full of holes along there, so we're probably going to go with that. I think when I measured it, it was 865 long from wheel tub to wheel tub, so that's good. I'm not putting it in the original Daihatsu way. What it is, the way the Daihatsu did it, is uh, the edge of this floor is folded down 90 and it's spot welded underneath the floor into the tub. That's not happening. I hate welding above my head. So it's just gonna get stitched to the tub on the outside. Once it's covered in Raptor liner, you'll never see it anyway. Um, and to mount the floor sheet, it was also the same. On both sides, the floor had a 90 folded on it and it was spot welded when I get that strap out of the way, spot welded in through the side as well. So what I'm probably going to do is not do that. I've got a tool I fabbed up a while ago to fold a return on my brother's um, K25 Deluxe Corolla we mini tubbed. So it's basically round bar with a slot in it. You slide it up the sheet and then you tease it along the sheet to 90 degrees. Um, so I'll probably do that in the bottom of the wheel tubs. So I've got the wheel tub coming down and then a ledge and then I'll spot weld the sheet down to the ledge on the bottom of the tub so that I have a weld above my head. And then the rest of it just spot weld straight down to the bracing. These braces actually come up pretty good once I hit them with a wire brush and stuff. They're a lot thicker than I thought. I might get away with not having to replace them, which would be handy because it's a compound bend and my boss's um, brake press is broken. So I can't fold them up without a lot of effort. But here's the donor cab. So it's the whole back wall section. I kept this originally just for the window. Um, they're hard to find. 
And if I break one in, that thing over there, no, I haven't mowed my backyard. I will get to it when I want to. Um, so I kept it for the back window and the seal. Figured if it's in a cab, I won't break it. Um, we're gonna use this portion along here. Radius from the top of the roof down, and then it's flat there. It's actually spot welded through here to the back of the cab wall. So I'll drill the spot welds on the inside. And then this has got like a nice little bubble there, which will look pretty nice with the floor skid welded to it. So I'll go from that cut about to where that rust hole is in the corner there and just starting on these ribs i'll have to dolly these out flat so the where it blends in there i'll have to cut and section a bit it'll go about 10 mil up into them unfortunately which is a bit shit but it'll get the look i'm looking for we'll start with that hack that out and we'll go from there so Overall time. See you in a bit. Come on now. Yes. There we go. There's our nice radius. Turn down for the flat floor, I might have to straighten that up a smidgen. So that'll go in the car like that. Ish. With a lot of cleaner. Yeah. Alright, let's see if I can't get a somewhat parallelish line marked here. was a good choice. Yeah, it's going all right. Pretty rough. We'll see what happens when I throw a grinder at it. Now, because there's nothing really holding the body of this car on, I don't really want to go stepping on the body. So. <sighs> see if I can't break an ankle doing this. I oh, hit the exhaust is solid. Um, a slab squat on top of the chassis rail. Maybe. Yep, that looks that looks safe. Totally safe. Where's my power? Why is it falling there? No power. There we go. That looks rough, but um, I'm sure I can make it work. I'm going to need to get in that corner. A little, wee bit more angle. Just Straight? Not really. But I don't know. Insert something smart here. Shit, it's only a rusty old die out to it'll be right. Oh, I really don't want to have to cut that from underneath the car, that'd suck. Yeah. 
All right, now that's cut out. We'll trim this up as soon. Uh, I'm gonna cut it long, obviously. Uh, it's probably only gonna go back to here and I've got another 50 on it. Um, I'm also thinking about flipping it. So I was gonna have to go that way and the floor go under there. But now I'm thinking, cause I've done a fucking shit job of cutting that car. That might come to the top. I'll spot weld it to the original floor and then the floor sheet will come along and it'll cover up these ribs anyway. And I'll just spot weld down to that. The shape looks pretty much on it. So that's why I'm trimming it up short or long for now. Um, then I'll cut it to width. I'm going to slip her in there uh, and see if my idea is going to work. If it is, that'll be cool. So we'll get the cut. Hopefully I marked a straight line on this one and the last one. somehow join that up to there. <laughs> mm, I wonder if I could just do that. Do I have a different colour texture? Maybe that one? Because um, red texture on red paint, really fucking hard to see I just found out. Oh wow, that texture's fucking hard. It'll give me something though. Cut it to width, I'll cut it down, cut it shorter on the shitty end of it. Um, leftovers had quite a bit of rust in its roof gutters where the hexes normally go. Um, so this why this ends fuck, this is sort of the middle of the roof. So I'll try and use that part because it's mostly surface rust free. Trying to work out the width on it being square is gonna be fun. Now, well, I re-measured it and it is 865 on the nose. So, cut it to that. And if I need to take any fat off it, I'll trim it to suit. There's a couple of textures up here. I'll try the non-shit texture. Let me put that one in again. Good text to that one. Where have I been hiding that all my life? I know the other end's square, so. I'll just run some zebra crossing marks along it and try and bend my old ruler. Nope. Alright, we'll freehand it. It's only a part of the floor pants, probably fairly structural, critical bit of gear, so I might as well fuck it up too, eh? Oh, see how bad I got this. Well, these will wait. Ain't too bad. It's got a bit of a bubble in the middle there. I'll hit him with the flap and sort it out now. Uh, do I have a fork? Flap and forage? Nope. I 
normally use a four inch grinder, but it was cheap. And digging in and around roll cage tube and shit on leftovers, it was actually pretty handy. is some bitch. We'll catch back out at the rig. Okay, first patch repair done. Sweet shit. So if it's anything like Sarge, this thing sits for five years now. Um, but now I'm pushing it through as best I can with my shortened up time off. But that's okay. So if I hold this up in position, I had to do a wee bit of creative grinding on the edge here, on the like the step of the patch repair. Uh, get it to pull in, hold it up with my hand, it's a bit of a bastard. There we go, and uh, probably can't see it on camera, but it just shows up how fucking horrible I cut the car. So I'll probably mark it a bit better and cut the car a bit straighter. It's getting seam sealed anyway, you wouldn't see it, but it'll just make my eye twitch, so I'll have to do it. So what I'm going to do now, I've got a set of those like NASCAR Clico pins, so I'll um, pop a few holes in hold it up in position so I can just visualize that big W. Um, yeah, got the Clecos from Summit Racing over in the States when me and the boys were watching King of Hammers, that was pretty rad. Uh, they had no parts for the fair lane, or Cleveland in general, which was a little annoying, so I got to watch me mates buy all these rad parts for their LSs, and I just bought tools, because <laughs> that's all I could do. So I'll have to get them, read the instructions, how to use them, probably watch a YouTube tutorial as well because I've never fucking used them. Um, get some in there and then I'll be able to pitch off this floor brace and how far back I'm going to cut this and uh, start welding it in. God, this is going to be horrible. Well, that's one click I win. Uh, it turns out it's actually not that hard to do. Just to bang a hole through it and uh, stuff the click in. So, now that that's pinned, we'll try this side. I've already pre drilled the car body. Now comes the fun part of trying to mark that one so I can drill it. Or do I just, uh, just ramrod it, you reckon? Maybe I should just ramrod it. Okay, hopefully I didn't make that hole oval. But if they did, at least the kit comes to two sizes. That's nice. That is nice. Maybe put one in the middle there, and then I'll be able to give it a bit of a topsy turvy, wiggly fliggly, and work out what shape I'm going for. Yep. When doing it, you want to use your bluntest three and a half mil drill a bit. Drill bit to, uh, to do it. That's for sure. Okay, I'll get that one later. Well, 
Well, I guess I made that whole oval. <laughs> Till do it. Okay, that's the patch panel sorted. Sort of ready to weld in. I got the roof ribs out of it. So now I'm going to pitch out for my plug welds. Once I climb my fat ass in here, somehow. Oh, my Oh, it's a long way down. Right, so I'm just going to go for an 8mm drill because um, most of your standard spot welds are around the 8 10 mark, depending on age. And then, I don't know. Maybe 100 mil separations, something like that. That's what I'm feeling. I marked a border for the top of the ridge here, so the spot will be somewhere in the middle of that, give or take. I'm not being real fussy about it. Just give it a rough pitch out, center to center. it is still going to be stitched on the uh, on the edges as well so Anyway, it's a little bit uneven because uh, it's not a set width, it doesn't end on a whole number, like 600 flat or whatever, it's like 680. I could divide that by a number and come up with a measurement, but fuck that. Have a go blowing this in, eh? Maybe if I put some turn some gas on, eh? Yeah. Fuck. Oh, uh, now I'm going to grind that little lump of dog shit out of there. Okay. Show you that. Fuck no. 
I should have checked the gas before I pulled the trailer, I suppose. Oh. Well, it's going in. Pull this end clay out because that's the last spot weld on the line. Okay, first panel in. I sort of over teased the top here, so I thought it'd be easier to tease it back in once it's plugged than trying to do it in the bench vise. Get out of it, fly. So that's good because that's just got to line up to there, well, pretty much. Um, and then when I put the floor on, I'll Cleco the center of this up because it's got a bit of a dip in it, but it'll pull up. So first bit in, which is good. I'll straight edge from this over a bit high. I probably should have cleaned a bit of paint off the inside there so I can put a tack on it, but that's right. enough. Wait for this to cool down, buff the heads of them off and I'm pretty sure I've got some edge primer somewhere. I'll just give it a quick hit with some edge so it doesn't rust up any more than it already is. Yeah. Give this a coat see what she looks like. Well, that blue line just shows right up. With a nice heavy coat. Doesn't look too bad. Ish. Sorta. Kinda ish. Anyway, once you've got another floor sheet on it, and uh, it's covered in bloody wrap the line, you ain't gonna see fuck all of that. And it'll sort of semi look factory, I suppose, once I wipe a bit of fucking sicker boy seam sealer through the middle there. It'll come up alright, I think. No. All right. Uh, we're probably going to call this an episode. Um, I know it's been a while, but uh, I'll keep pottering around. I'll probably have to order the sheet to continue on. I've still got the rush repairs to do in the um, driver and passenger floor pans, where it like comes down for the floor 
sheet to sit on. Uh, I can probably cut that out of that roof skin. Um, I'll probably end up doing that. If not, I'll just, I'm going to order like a full sheet of 1.2 and I'll just fold it up at work. Because uh, it's just all flat. Flat with 90s. Pretty easy. Um, so yeah, I'll get to that. The other thing I've decided, I've modified an F20 12R1600 starter motor to fit. It's not a permanent thing. There's washers and spaces to get the uh, block plate stick out correct to the pinion. Uh, but the pinion was the same diameter and the right pitch. I had to egg the holes. The holes were 110 mounting in the F10 and the F20 had 105, of course, just to be a pain in the ass. So, Got it in, cranks the motor, um, still didn't run, and it's burnt this starter motor out too. So two starters down and non-running non engine. I uh, was doing the same thing, skipping, carrying on, sort of running on two, maybe three, then back to two, and then one, and stuff like that. So I uh, made a decision, it's head off, that's it. I'm not going to spend $200 on that other starter to get it rebuilt and rewound, put it back in this to burn it out again, trying to get it to run. So that's it, it's head off, I've had enough. Uh, it needs a water pump bearing as well, so I'll do that too while it's apart. Um, it's probably a stuck valve, uh, or it even could have a stuck ring. It does blow a bit when you're cranking it and it's trying to start out of the rock cover breather. So it could have a stuck ring and it's just down on comp on one cylinder and just doesn't want to start. Um, the ballast resistor on the core is right. I've got another one there, I've just been too lazy to change it, so I've just been bridging that together. So the core, the points have just been seen. 14 and a half volts straight out of that coil the entire time, so they no doubt burn out. So, yeah, next vid, it'll either be more rush repairs uh, or pulling the head off. To finish the rush repairs in the passenger side floor pan, I'll have to pull the fuel tank out. It's in between the chassis and the floor where the seat bolts. Uh, it's sort of, it's a well and then it cups up and over the, few, uh, over the chassis rail, so it's a real pain in the ass to pull out. I dreading that at the moment. That fuel tank's a bit of a mess. It's a big dent in it that's full of need it. So it's probably a hole right next to the fuel tank drain and they've actually needed it over the fuel tank drain. So I can't drain the fuel or whatever's in that tank out. I do have another one. I thought it was out of a vehicle at my parents, but turns out dad's actually put it in something. So um, I'll have to pull that out and then I'll have to pull it out of this one as well because I don't really feel like exploding cutting too deep through the floor and directly into the fuel tank. That's probably not a really good idea. So we'll get to that. Um, yeah. So catch me for episode, what is it, six next time for more work on this rusty little rig jigger. Keep it upside down, eh? Are we fucking recording? Yes, we're recording. Are you recording now, bud? Yeah, we're recording now. You've got to remember to push that button. Right. Uh, let's probably redo that. Uh.